Hi guys, today's episode we are going to talk about the comeback scheme and some war stories of the well-known SAFS. First, we are going to talk about the standard color scheme and markings. In December 2883, after the first mass production model successfully passed the battle evaluation test, SAFS entered mass production. Initially, they used AFS Mark I's basic color, MAA gray, as the default color scheme. But as conditions improved, SAFS was able to handle all kinds of regional camouflage. SAFS has a basic color code. Uh, it is called 2008L. Even if this sounds a bit unnecessary, this color is called SMAA gray. Here you can see three camouflage variants. The one on the left belongs to Corporal H.M. Hauptmann, 15th Panzer Hunter Regiment, took part in Operation Super Hammer, the mercenary counterattack in September 2885. So during this operation, the Corporal was captured while trapped under a destroyed croat, and unfortunately became a captive. However, on his way to the POW camp, he managed to steal some fuel and escape with his armor suit, SAFS. After a long and tortuous journey, he was able to rejoin his original unit. His escape from the enemy was turned into a propaganda film to boost the morale of the mercenaries, which, you know, made him the most hated man among them. The suit is painted in single color, SMAA gray. The left chest has a leak badge, and the letters at his back are personal codes. The one in the middle is Lieutenant Paul Butterfield, leader of Force Platoon, nicknamed Eggbrand 6, from 14th Panzer Fox Regiment. He also took part in the Grand Counter Attack. The Force Platoon was deployed in the desert areas and had a brained patterns of sand yellow and desert pink painted on the squadron's armor suits. The squadron's mark is a blue eyeball and the chest mark on this suit is the personal insignia of the lieutenant. Some equipment notes around the shoulder plates are in white tags. During this operation, the platoon destroyed two nut rockers and captured one. Although the lieutenant was a plumper before the war and started from nothing when he joined the mercenary, his outstanding leadership has left many heroic achievements for him. After the counter-attack, he was promoted for his service and was soon promoted to squadron commander in a subsequent campaign. His final rank was colonel. The armor suit on the right-hand side belongs to Lieutenant Oswald Ufuch, 1st platoon in Eggplant 6 Squadron, 14th Panzer Hunter Regiment, active during Operation Ground Counter-Attack September 2885. As the main force of this operation, the combat scheme of Eggplant 6 Squadron is full color fruit ash. However, according to part of the battle plan, some armor suits were camouflaged in action as well. The blue eyeball was used as the squadron's symbol. This picture shows Surgeon Jody Creep's armor suit, which took part in Arsenal aircraft landing operation. The Hanjum G symbol on the top is the platoon leader's emblem, and the dice on the chest and rear armor are the surgeon's personal insignia. The suit's base coating is based on a bright color called SMAA Sky Color and painted with tricolor camouflage. Now I'm gonna tell you a war story of commander of 10th Panzer Hunter Regiment, Captain Yuri Ozorov. For mercenaries in the Australian region, the operation to stop the Strong Republic Army from building an integrated ground control base had to be an absolute success because they did not have the strength to build a system that could fight it. However, the same is true for the Strau side, who assembled equipment to ensure a complete defense for the construction of this base, which will have a serious impact on the future situation of the war. This time, the mercenaries were inferior in strength and quality comparing to the Strau Republic, so an assault by a small group of SAFS troops was the only effective means. Therefore, a number of men were selected to lead and execute this important operation, but in the end, the list was narrowed down to two commanders, one of whom was chosen based on the results of the previous Nutrucker attack. 
and the commanders would each lead a platoon of SAFS on the assault. The captain Yuri Ozorov, later promoted to lieutenant, was chosen to lead the operation, and below is his armor suit deployed in this operation. However, before mercenary special forces attacked the Strau Republic spy satellite in October 2885, the Republican army had anticipated such an attack, and therefore concentrated their effort on building spy satellites and deploying near OB patrols and interceptors. At the same time, they began building an independent ground control system in case these satellites were to cease operation. As a first step for the defensive preparation, in July 2885, the Strau Republic Army imposed military control in a conflict zone in today's northern Australia, in the city of Rattingen, under Strau Republic's control. They also began the construction of an integrated base for the entire force control and early warning system. This information was soon obtained by garrison spies posing as Australian farmers, who learned that a munition factory in New Canberra had ordered heavily armed large-caliber turrets for not rockets to defend the base. And details of camouflage nettings for the first batch of two large-caliber turrets were also intercepted. Mercenary troops are aware that not rockets armed with those turrets will be installed under the convoy of four conventionally armed not rockets and deployed in an undisclosed location. The not rockets will be deployed in pairs around the base upon their arrival, and the Stroud army will deploy dozens of not rockets to fortify the base. So once this defensive deployment is completed, mercenary troops are powerless. So they formed a special force to destroy the not rockets on the ferry at the right time. Normally, the heavy nut rockets with large caliber turrets will not fire during the ferry, but once they do, they will also be out of the range of the mercenary storehouse TOS anti tank rockets. And if the rockets could hit their targets at maximum range, they won't be able to penetrate the new nut rockets' heavy armor. As a result, some SAFS were ordered to carry 80 kilograms of armato explosive and use their agility and stealth to make raids. Therefore, ASAFS, each loaded with 80 kilograms of armato explosive, and 12 ordinary SAFS were deployed underground with the crew lying in wait in suspended animation. They expected to be able to take out the heavy nut rocket with 300 kilograms of dynamite. And in a worst case scenario, even 80 kilograms of dynamite will incapacitate the target. The operation turned out to be a success. The special forces destroyed and severely damaged one of the heavy nut rocket and one of the regular nut rocket on the ferry. But the mercenary also lost 14 SAFS and four crew members, that includes a man who will never wake up because of a faulty stimulant device. And the commander, Captain Yuri Ozorov, survived the battle by bailing out the suit after his SAFS was hit by Nut Rocket's counterfire after planting Amatov explosives. And that would be the end of today's episode, and I hope you guys enjoyed today's content. Thank you.